Adam Taxon here talking with Daniel Greenfield, who writes the Sultan Kanish blog, which can be found at sultankanish.blogspot.com. And we're doing a supplement to the column. And uh, these can, of course, be downloaded. Daniel, what are the websites, again, that are best for turning a YouTube video uh, into a, an audio MP3? They're endless amount. If you just Google YouTube to MP3, you'll get more websites than you can shake a mouse at. Yeah, and a lot of you have uh, portable have uh, phones, which you can just listen directly on the phone, and that's what we're going for here. Okay, how to write about Israel? You wrote this very satirically, and uh, you know it doesn't lend itself to an obvious question, but you basically are telling, talking about what's what the mentality is for a so-called mainstream media reporter who happens to be in Israel. Uh, let's give a little summary. Can you give a little bit of a summary and some examples, Daniel? Uh, if you look at the writing of Karl Wick, if you just look at any article in the New York Times on Israel, you can see the same mentality repeated over and over again. If you've read one article about Israel, you've read a thousand articles about Israel from the mainstream media, and all of them have the same tiresome content, the same peace is still far away. Israel is to blame for this latest explosion in a cycle of violence. The only way to resolve this is to go back to the negotiating table. The Israelis are the bad guys. The Palestinian Muslim Arabs are the innocent suffering. Even when they commit terrible acts, it's only because they're passionate and embittered. Yeah, so it, there was, all the responsibility goes entirely on the Israeli side. Of course. Everything would be perfect. It would be a multicultural utopia. If only the Jews had stayed ethnically cleansed in Jerusalem and so on and so forth. That if you've had any exposure to the American mainstream media, for that matter, the European mainstream media, then this is stuff that you've already absorbed, even if you don't know that you absorbed it. Yeah, you um, really, I hadn't seen a piece like this before, yet some of the cliches that you cite are so obvious. Um, it's just, wow, I can't believe someone hadn't written it yet, and to tell the truth. But could you give an example of some of the uh, cliches, you know, in terms of more specifics about the reporters' mentalities? Like the beards, for example, that you mentioned in there. Well, the most obvious one for Jewish reporters in particular is to discuss how they've had so little connection with Judaism since their bar mitzvah. How going to Israel maybe might have stirred a little something in them, but then they see that Jews are oppressing another people, and this is not the Judaism that they understand, and they've had to wrestle and struggle with their feelings on the subject. You'll find this in numerous of these travelogues. I love what... Of course, please go on. I love what you say uh, about the um, restaurant that they choose to go to, the cafes. That was a great example, too. That's a staple of the story, of course. They, have, they always find these elderly Arabs who have been on the land for countless generations, who have suffered through... Israeli oppression and occupation, and who still just long for peace and make a great uh, whatever they like to eat at the given moment. Now, uh, who's doing the best reporting from Israel now, in contrast? You didn't really get into that in the article, but who would be a go-to, you know, source, and specific reporters? The, main, the, the mainstream, in terms of reporters, with the mainstream media, you get reporters which, who just report the same things. If you look at the Jerusalem Post, you occasionally get some interesting material, uh, but it's more from columnists than from reporters. About the only English language reporter who does any work from Israel that I would even remotely cite um, would be. Well, I mean, I would I, obviously reading Caroline Good. I knew you were going to say that. Yeah. So Honig is good, but uh, they're columnists rather than reporters. But uh, reporters, there's a. A uh, Palestinian Arab uh, guy named uh, Khaled Abu Tlam. Yep. Who actually turns in some interesting material. Yeah, uh, I've, I've seen But that's the Jerusalem well. Post. He actually does some columns also. So, say you're one of the people who reads this on the daily, who's going to see our interview on the daily back on Facebook, Facebook, and you don't know many Jews, but you're pro-Israel, and you want to get good information on Israel. So you would recommend going to Carolyn Glick or Kabut Al, what, um, how do you pronounce his name exactly? I'll just spell it K A K H A L E D, A B U T O A M E H. I wouldn't. I'm not necessarily saying that these are going to be perfect information sources. This was um, by doing material. If you already know something about Israel, if yeah. you already know a fairly decent amount about Israel. But overall, there's no good American reporting being done on Israel anymore. Not in, in decades already. I guess you're better off just listening to Glenn Beck.
Uh, this is Adam Tax, and I seem to have had a problem with the digital recorder near the end of the interview. We didn't get all of it, uh, but it's five minutes long, and uh, you know I'll leave you hanging and waiting for more. Uh, but you can check out the rest of the column at Daniel Greenfield at blog. I'm sorry at SultanKanish.blogspot.com. Not my day.